In today's video, I'm going to show you the differences between perpetual versus periodic inventory when it comes to the purchase of merchandise. But before I get to that, I want to say I believe something great is going to happen for you today. And now back to the video. If you're someone who are not quite sure the difference between perpetual and periodic inventory method, or you keep getting them confused, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate it, and that'll let me know that you could use some more videos like this. Today, we're going to talk about the recording or journalizing of the transaction when merchandise is purchased for resale. In this case, we're talking about merchandise. So it would be items that the company is purchasing to sell to customers. This wouldn't be items that are purchased for use or for supplies for the company. So this is specifically the types of things that would go into inventory and ultimately to cost of goods sold. In our example, we're going to journalize the following transaction. The company purchases merchandise on credit for a cost of 4,500. The first method we're going to use is the perpetual inventory method. And when you use perpetual inventory, the company records the purchase directly into inventory. Now we know that inventory is an asset and therefore assets increase with debits. So we're going to debit the inventory account. And we're going to debit for the full cost of the merchandise, $4,500. We need an equal and offsetting credit. And here it tells us that it is a sale on credit. So that's going to be crediting accounts payable. Accounts payable is a liability. And it increases with credits. And that will be for the same $4,500. Our transaction balances, and we have properly recorded the purchase of $4,500 worth of merchandise in the perpetual inventory system. Now let's look at the periodic inventory method. In that method, the companies do not place the items for accounting purposes directly into inventory, but a periodic inventory is taken. You can then calculate the cost of goods sold based upon how much the beginning inventory was, add in the purchases, and then subtract out the ending inventory would give you the cost of goods sold. So in this case, we're purchasing the same $4,500 worth of merchandise on credit, but because it's the periodic system, we do not put it directly into inventory for accounting purposes. Of course, the actual physical items are inventory, but for our purposes for accounting, we're gonna put it into purchases. That's the name of the account. Purchases, it is an, it is an asset account, so it increases with debits, 4,500. And we're gonna need the credit that offsets it. And because everything was purchased on credit, it's going to be the same accounts payable account for 4,500. That balances. So we have now properly recorded our purchase of merchandise in the periodic inventory method. That's all I have for you today on that. If you'd like free updates via email, please sign up for my free emails at askprofessorcapco.com. I also ask that you subscribe to this channel so you would learn more about the difference between perpetual and periodic inventory methods and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.